Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I want to talk to you about, you know, a question I see people asking who are kind of getting into painting or abstract art. And that is, should I do big, large paintings or should I do a lot of small paintings? So I wanted to kind of address that and give you three kind of things to think about, three different little topics or something uh, to think about when it comes to, you know, whether or not you should paint large objects like this, this canvas right here, which is six foot, or should you paint something small, like either small canvases or, you know, on paper or something like that, which this is only eight by 11. So this is almost about the size of a normal sheet of paper. Um, so I want to talk about that. And, and three different topics within that. So to maybe help you decide whether or not you should do large paintings like this or smaller paintings on small canvas or paper or some other small surface. So let's talk about that. So the first part of this is how long it takes you to create a piece. So when creating abstract, I find that obviously abstract art tends to not take as long as something is say, a surrealist piece okay so if you have a piece that takes a lot of detail like a lot of layers or it's got a lot of small fine details and you're going for precision generally most of those paintings are smaller because there's already a lot of detail so to cover a large area with that much detail it just takes so long for for many artists that they tend to do smaller at least more small compared to abstract uh, pieces. So I've even seen large detailed things, but they just, they take, you know, weeks, maybe even months for that artist to complete. And if that's your thing and, and that's what you want to do, uh, phenomenal. I'm jealous because I, I don't have the time to do that. Now, if you're going that way where you're doing very highly detailed paintings, a lot of those paintings tend to be smaller. Like, the Mona Lisa is not a large painting, right? So those types of pieces tend to be smaller. Now, if you're doing abstract, here's what I've found, that it is actually easier, and I'm not even kidding, to do a painting that is larger, a few feet, than it is to do a small abstract work. And here's why. When I do a painting, here, let me show you a painting. This painting right here, okay? This is a small painting and it only took me a few minutes. However, the problem that I tend to run into, even with uh, you know this painting right here, I ran into the same issue, is that the ratio of paint that you use for these smaller abstract paintings tends to be more than what you would use on a large painting. So what happens, especially at least to me, and I, I have a feeling because I've read other forums and stuff that a lot of people, a lot of abstract artists find that it's actually easier to create paintings on larger surfaces than it is smaller surfaces. And a lot of people say it's because they feel contained, right? When you're when you're working with a smaller surface, you just you feel confined and it's it's harder to express the the magnificence of of how you feel in that abstract work to a smaller space. Now there might be a little bit of egotism in that. You might feel like, oh, I, I need to work on large canvases um, to really express myself. And maybe part of that egocentric idea comes from the more earlier uh, abstract artists like Rothko or, or Pollock who, who made these large feet long paintings, right? And so we see that and we feel intimidated and, or, or that we need to also do that because that's what they did. But I don't think all of it is part of that. I think that part of it is the ratio of the paint itself, at least for me. So let me explain that. When I do a piece this way, there's a lot of videos you haven't seen on my channel of pieces that I've done that got ruined because I wanna post those, but I already know that I've messed up when I first got into the painting. And here's why, because I used too much paint for the area, for the surface. And so with smaller pieces, it's almost harder to, to use a certain amount of paint or even certain tools because I love to do scrape paintings, but on smaller surfaces, scrape paintings are harder to do because one, I tend to use too much paint for that, that piece. Even if I use a little bit of paint, it's easy to use too much paint on something this size. But if I do something this size, it's almost impossible to use too much paint 
because there's such a wide area. Does that make sense? So even if I put a lot of paint on this canvas, I'm probably not putting enough paint because it's so large. Now, depending on the style, yes, but most likely on a six foot canvas, you're not gonna use too much paint unless you're just pouring it on. But even then, you'd still have to use a lot of paint. So I tend to not use enough paint on a, on a painting this size because it's such a wide area. But on a small piece of paper like this, I tend to use too much paint. So that's one thing to consider. Um, also, it's more difficult for something this size to use certain tools. You know, I love to scrape my paintings, but my paintings, my scrapers tend to be too big for the paper. So it's like it, it takes up the whole thing and it either scrapes too much paint off or it's just so wide that it covers too much of the area or something like that. It doesn't create the effect. It's harder to create the same effect on this as it is this because there's it's just a smaller space to work with. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The surface area of the piece, it depends on how detailed you want to be and how much paint you're looking to use, how much materials, um, you know, what the style is in and of itself that you wish to do. So there's a lot of things to, to kind of consider in that. So it comes down to the confinement of the space and the materials you're going to use. So that's one. The second thing is just selling and shipping that artwork. Obviously, one thing you need to consider when sending art is the, the way that you have to ship that art and the cost of that shipping. Setting a painting this size is a nightmare. So you can set it in boxes. You can find boxes for this, but one, they're really hard to find. And if you don't send it in a normal box, you have to send it in a crate. And the crate is really annoying to send it in because you have to build a crate. There's almost no crates for something this size. And if there is, they're astronomically expensive. So there's almost no point in even doing it. So you either have to make a crate, find a crate or find a box that's this size to get it shipped out. And even sending it in a cardboard box wrapped up and, and stuff like that, sending something this size is probably gonna cost you a few hundred dollars, at least on the bare minimum side, probably 150 to 200. Now, depending on the price that you sell something like that for, if you sell it for a few thousand, that's nothing, right? However, if you are shipping it, you need to know that, that that's gonna cost quite a bit just to send that. Now, if I send something like this, I, oh, sorry, I shifted it just a little bit. Um, if I send something like this, super easy. I can either send it flat, like in a piece of cardboard, and it's gonna be like 40 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever. I can even ship it in a frame and send the frame in a box wrapped up and everything for 60 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever, depending on how far it's going. So, you know, that's another thing to think about is the shipping. And this is a real thing to consider because of the cost. You need to consider all of these things if you want to sell your artwork, or even if you just want to give it to people or sell it in a museum or a gallery, sorry, I'd, I'd maybe museum someday, but gallery is what I meant. Even if you want to sell it in a gallery or just sell it to people normally and not ship it, you still need to keep in mind that most people want a space for a specific reason. Now, yes, I could sell this six foot painting and I've sold one before that that was that size. Uh, the rest of them I either sold at a low price to someone I knew or I gave them away because there was something wrong with it, like maybe the canvas was warped or something like that. And they were able to use it in their living room. But for the price of the size of that painting, I found that most people, at least not in my demographic that I tend to attract, don't want to buy something that large. They tend to buy smaller pieces that are three feet or less because they want to put it on a specific wall, you know, in their hallway or in their bedroom or above their fireplace or whatever it is. So that's just my personal experience. I can't speak for you because everyone is different and depending on who you attract or where you sell, that's going to take some other things into consideration for that aspect. So again, it really comes down to selling and shipping and just keeping that in mind. Do you want, are you okay with having to create something this big? Are you okay with having to find boxes that will fit something like this or, you know, even four or five feet, you know, and having to wrap that up and put glass sign on it and, you know, doing all of the other things that you are required to do, depending on how you sell that, 
and meeting those requirements. If you sell through something like Saatchi Art, Saatchi Art is very specific on how you have to ship that painting. If it's four, if it's larger than four feet, you have to crate it and you have to wrap it a specific way. And if you don't follow those instructions and something happens to that piece, you don't get paid. So it's something to keep in mind. Now I'm not complaining. I follow their rules because I want to get paid and I want the customer to get what they ordered, you know, without any issues. And so far, so good. You now, knock on wood, I'm knocking on a, oh, my, put my tabletop here. But my point is just another thing to consider the price and the shipping of those pieces. Are you okay with shipping something like that or building a crate or having someone else build you a crate or finding a box that large, which for me is difficult to do? Again, just things to consider when selling the pieces. It's a lot easier to sell and ship smaller pieces than it is something that big. Now, if you know how to do it, you're okay with all of that, then these things are great and you can sell them for a lot of money. And if and when you do sell them, the payoff is usually worth it. So again, just something to consider. Now, the last part that I kind of wanted to touch on was really just it depends on how good you are at your method okay you're free to do whatever you want obviously i'm not in charge of how you create so i can't tell you what's best for you right now currently if you've watched any of my recent videos you'll notice that i've been doing a lot of smaller pieces one, this is to train myself to be able to work on smaller pieces. Two, cost effectively, it's very, it's very cost effective for me to produce many small pieces um, as opposed to just always trying to do large pieces all the time. When I first started, that was my initial idea. Oh, I'm just going to create a bunch of large pieces. They're all going to sell. I'm going to do really well, blah, 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 blah. But if you're any sort of prolific artist, you'll come to the realization that you're going to create a lot more than you're going to sell. Or at least in my case, and most of the people I know, maybe you'll be the exception to the rule, hopefully. But if not, then you're going to create a lot of work that's going to go unsold and it's just going to hang around your house or in a storage unit or your garage or somewhere and that work is just going to sit there so something the last thing to consider is the work itself right one are you okay do you have room for a lot of large works if you have the room then i would say yeah go for it but if you don't have a lot of room then it's probably better to get your feet wet or to create a lot of smaller works that you can actually store and they're not going to get ruined or, not, or destroyed or you actually have the space for and you're okay with hanging on to because they're not getting, the, getting in the way like something like this, okay? So it comes down to space and, and holding on to those pieces because look, you're probably going to have a lot of pieces that don't sell. So it comes down to that. But the other part of it is your portfolio and who you are as an artist. The last, and this kind of is its own point, but it also ties into the same one. So we'll just say it's point four. It, it comes down to what you're trying to do as an artist, okay? So for me currently, I have a lot of large works already that I can sell or that I am trying to sell or that are available. So I have a lot of decent large scale works. And I say large meaning about three feet or, or above, right? So I have a decent amount. And because a lot of people have been kind of coming to this YouTube channel and kind of learning from it and, and subscribing, and I'm very grateful for that. Because of that, I just don't have the room or the really the income to continue to buy large scale canvases all of the time if they don't sell. Also, if I want to show my techniques to other people, it's just more cost effective for me to do it on smaller works. So currently I've been doing smaller works on paper because it's more cost effective. And this actually comes to two, two different points. So like there's two reasons why I'm doing smaller works instead of just large scale ones all the time uh, these days. One, like I said, it's more cost effective for the videos. So for these videos where I show you the techniques I use, which are mostly scraped or, you know, these dabbed abstract paintings that I tend to do because that's a method I just developed over time. 
it's just more cost effective for me to do them on smaller pieces so paper or small canvas because i can obviously buy a lot more small canvas or a lot of paper for the same price as one large canvas so it's it's easier for me to make the videos because i can buy the volume but the other part of this and i think that if you're just learning as an artist or you want to build your portfolio but you're kind of stuck do a lot of smaller pieces and really refine your method so whatever your method is doesn't really matter if it's you know dabbed or scraped or or brushed or whatever i don't know about poured if you're going to do poured paintings then just buy a lot of small canvases i think i have some so you know you can get like a like a value pack of 16 by 20 canvases from like michael's or you know some other hobby store and you know it comes with like I don't know, 10, 15, 20, something like that. And you, you'll get a lot of them. Yes, they're not the greatest quality, but to be honest with you, a lot of the people that I've sold them to, they don't really know. And I'm not saying that you should just give them crap because I believe in quality. But if you're going to create something like this, it's probably not gonna be that bad for what they're, they're getting it for. I mean, if they only want a small piece, using one of these is really not that bad. So uh, using those, if you know, if you're trying to kind of branch out and you're trying to really build your portfolio or you're trying to master a specific technique, what I would suggest is switching to smaller canvases or paper or something like that, you know, that you can start creating a higher volume of products. So what this is going to do is if you start creating more small works, one, you're going to be able to build your portfolio out. So you're gonna have more pieces to show people, right? If I just tried to do large canvases all the time, I would run out of materials. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do, I wouldn't, okay, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's say that instead of doing 20 small pieces, I decided to do three large pieces, okay? And then I record it on video for you to see. Right, I do those three large paintings. Well, that's just three videos, right? It doesn't really matter how long those videos are or how intense the painting was, that's still only three videos. But if instead I put that money into buying a lot of smaller pieces and I create 20 pieces, well, not only do I now have 20 videos worth of content, or let's say some of them turn out bad and we have 15, 15 is still five times more videos and content for you to see, but it's also 15 pieces that I can now sell on my website or Satya Art or whatever. So not only have I created more content for you to see, but I've also created more content for myself to sell. So now I have more works available because yes, they are smaller, they're not gonna sell as much, but they're also not as much of a hassle to ship. I've created more small works. It gives me more works to my name so my portfolio grows for, for people to see the different type of content or works that I create. And it's also helping me to really hone in on my skill because if I wanna get really good at a method, say scraped or dabbed or whatever, I have to do it a lot, right? You only really get good at something by doing it over and over and over and over. You don't get good at something by just watching videos. You don't get good by listening to someone or reading books, okay? Yes, they can teach you things, but you don't master a thing until you do the thing. And so by creating a lot of smaller works, we can not only build up the portfolio, but build the mastery of our techniques by doing them over and over and over again. If I just did these three large paintings, yeah, I'd have three large paintings, but they're also gonna take up more room in my house or my garage or wherever I store them. And I didn't, you know, I got a little bit of mastery out of that, but instead of just three large paintings, I could do 20 small ones. And guess what? If one of those large ones doesn't turn out right and it's a, the whole thing is a waste, which I've had happen to me, well, that was a waste of supplies and a lot of supplies and that whole painting is gone and that's probably you know maybe a hundred dollars worth of materials out the window 
But if I make a bunch of small ones and even three of them don't turn out, I still have 17 of them that turned out pretty good and might sell. So even if I made those three ones and they were great and they were awesome, but they never sold, then of what, what, of, of what use are they to me? But if I made a bunch of small ones and even three of them sold, then I'm better off. My point is, is that it, it really comes down to what you're trying to do as an artist, okay? Using small or large, it's up to you, obviously, but it comes down to what you're trying to do. If you already understand your method and you're really good at it and you want to create some large works to to have in your portfolio or because you know that they can sell for a lot, then by all means, do it, please. But if you're looking to learn a method or if you're looking to create, you know, more works to build out a portfolio or if you're even just looking to do something different and really master your craft by trying to do it on a smaller scale, then try doing it on smaller pieces, either smaller canvas or paper or whatever. Because overall, it just comes down to what you're trying to do. And if you want to just continue to improve and you want to build out your portfolio, I would say do a bunch of small pieces and, and see if that doesn't help you get better at that method, but also build your portfolio. So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please let me know. Um, I just wanted to share that with you, with my fellow artists, and you know, just kind of my thoughts on creating the, on um, you know, the pros and cons or the differences in creating small works versus large works. But that's it. I will catch you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye, guys. Thanks.